Hi, and welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. My name is uh, Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen this show before, I do nothing but elder law. I practice at a firm called Myrick O'Connell. There are 60 of us uh, in central Massachusetts. I do nothing but this. Now, usually, uh, you are watching this show because I have a guest either here or here, and I'm interviewing that guest and talking about an issue that I feel is relevant to you uh, because there are some players that you need to know if you're a senior and you're, and you're trying to figure things out. Um, but today, I'm just talking myself because I want you to understand what is being proposed as part of Governor Baker's budget this year. The, the budget came in, it was given to the legislature about a month ago. Budgets typically have a whole bunch of sections asking for money, and they're detailed. And then they have some other sections called outside sections. They are sections which, um, while they're part of the, the budget process, if they get enacted, they are actually changes to the law, typically changes to the law that will increase revenue or decrease expenses. So one of the outside sections in this year's budget, outside section 11, will significantly expand the power of the state uh, to collect money uh, from you or from your spouse or from the estate of you or your spouse um, if you have been on MassHealth and received MassHealth long-term care services. So this is really important whether or not you've already done planning to deal with these issues because this could change actually the effect on your existing plan and nothing that you did was grandfathered. So before I go through what outside section 11 does, I need to give you some background regarding how the law stands right now and why it works the way it works. Uh, as many of you know, and as I explain when I do presentations at the, uh, at the Salt Marsh, um, most of the people that I speak to are people who are either worried about getting Alzheimer's themselves, or they know someone who has Alzheimer's, or they already have it. And they are worried because the results of that, um, because the typical set of symptoms related to Alzheimer's is dementia, uh, and because dementia or the treatment of dementia is not covered by Medicare, um, those who have Alzheimer's always run the risk of going broke because of the cost of the care, unless they can qualify for Mass Health, which is the Massachusetts name for the Medicaid program. Now, how did we end up this way? Pretty simple. A quick history lesson. Back in 1965 was when Medicare was passed. One of the basic reasons for the passage of the Medicare program was to keep old people from going broke. Um, in 1960, in the 1960 census, over 33% of all of the people in America old over age 65 were poor. That's just an incredible statistic. Uh, especially compared to uh, numbers from the more recent census, when that number, despite the fact that the number of people over 65 has vastly increased, the percentage of them who are poor is now about 7%. The major reason for this is that prior to the passage of Medicare, old people couldn't get health insurance, regular health insurance. They'd get sick, they'd go broke. That changed because of Medicare, which covers the cost of treating just about all major kinds of diseases. If you, have, if you have cancer and you need treatments and you need operations, all this stuff is covered by Medicare. If you have uh, diabetes and you need drugs and you need treatments and same thing, you're going to the hospital a lot, it's all going to be covered by Medicare minus some very small deductibles. If you have Alzheimer's though, or any of the other diseases whose primary uh, effect is that they cause dementia, then that is not going to get covered by Medicare because the things that you need if you have dementia aren't what are called skilled services, the, sk the regular services of a nurse or a physical therapist or an occupational therapist. They're, the help that you need is day to day and it's help with eating and getting dressed in the morning and, and, and taking a shower and, uh, and someone to be there to make sure because you have dementia that you might just walk away and get lost and not be able to find your way home. Those costs are not covered by Medicare because they're not considered to be skilled services and therefore unless you can qualify for MassHealth 
you're going to be paying for them out of pocket. And if, as any of you who have had to deal with these issues know, those are big numbers. If you're in a skilled nursing facility, but Medicare isn't covering it, your cost is going to be over four, if you're on the island here, over $400 a month, or excuse me, over $400 a day times 30. So these are huge bills. These are bills in many, many places, twelve to $14,000 per month. So it's really, so for folks that I speak to, they're very concerned about trying to structure their assets, which they can do, so that they can qualify for mass health, especially if they're going to need nursing home care. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of those structures and the way in which outside Section 11 might affect them. If you are a single person right now and you came in to talk to me and you said, well, you know, I own couple of, I own some cash, I have some stocks, I have some bonds, but my really big asset is my home. And I really want to make sure that when I die, I want to make sure that I can live in my home until I die. And then when I die, I want to make sure that I can leave this to my kids so that my kids can sell the property and divide up the proceeds or, especially if you're on Nantucket, so that my kids can keep visiting Nantucket because everybody's goal, it seems, who has grown up here or who's summered here is to be able to come back. Now, if that was your plan, then my typical advice to you would be to transfer to your children or to a trust for their benefit uh, an interest in that property, but to keep a life estate in the house. What you're transferred to your children is something called a remainder interest. That is all, the total ownership of the house after you die. What you would keep for yourself is something called a life estate. That is total control of the property until you die. Uh, at the moment, in, 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 and if you've done that, and if five years have gone by, and you then need to qualify for Mass Health, you're going to be able to do that because that remainder interest is not going to be countable at all, and no lien can be put on that remainder interest to assure that Mass Health gets repaid after you die. You will have kept in that case a life estate, and Mass Health, if you were in a nursing home and qualify for Mass Health, will put a lien on that life estate. But following your death, that life estate will disappear, and therefore so will the lien. And so through this device, many, many people here on the island uh, have structured things so that they can live in their home until they die. And if they need to go to the nursing home, they can know that following their death, their children will be able to sell the property Medicaid lien free. Now, outside Section 11 will affect all of those people and will affect you if you have structured things that way. And the way that it'll affect you is while it will not change your ability to qualify for mass health, it will assure that at the moment of your death, a, an amount of value, which is equal to the value of your life estate at the moment of your death, will constitute a lien on that property and will have to get repaid to mass health at some point. Now, because you're on Nantucket, that life estate value, even though it's only a percentage of the value of the total property, say 20%, that lien could be huge. I was just at the home of a person who has a very, very nice home. Uh, actually, this is a couple, uh, and it's very nice. Uh, and it's on a kind of a medium-sized uh, piece of land, fairly large, actually, for, for Nantucket, and that's the reason why their property is worth over $3 million dollars. Right? Well, 20% of $3 million is $600,000. That would be the value of the lien that MassHealth would have following your death if you owned that property, had kept a life estate in it, and needed nursing home care. So that's one of the things the outside section does. It says that as opposed to today when MassHealth's claims against a person who has been on MassHealth getting long-term care services uh, and then dies, the claims are limited to the assets in the so-called probate estate. What this expanded estate recovery provision would do is it would give MassHealth an interest, in this case, in a life estate. It would also affect you, by the way, uh, if you were married and you and your husband owned your property jointly, uh, probably as tenants by the entirety, uh, the legal effect of which is that if one of you dies, the other one, uh, that your interest in the property evaporates and your spouse becomes the sole owner. So your interest never goes through probate. So if you were in that situation and then found yourself in a nursing home and needed to qualify for MassHealth, 
you actually would not even need to be transferring that property out of your name because you're allowed to own your own a home or an interest in a home and still qualify in mass, for mass health mass health would in that case put a lien on your interest in the property or might put a lien on your interest but if you were married and your husband were still at home mass health wouldn't even do that and following your death if you died in the nursing home the lien there would be no lien your husband would become the sole owner of the property and he would have no obligation he or she to pay mass health back that's going to change too as a result of outside section 11 under outside section 11 if you owned a property jointly with your husband, you ended up in the nursing home, uh, you ended up receiving MassHealth, and then you died, MassHealth would have a claim against your home equal to 50% of the value of your home when you died, even though that value never passed through your probate estate. Once again, we're talking Nantucket here, so these could be big, big numbers. So that's the first piece of outside Section 11 that would affect you. Let me talk to you about the second piece, though. And let me go back to the example that I just gave you. Uh, you and your husband owned a home. Uh, you owned the property jointly with your husband. You ended up having to qualify for mass health and being in a nursing home. You then died, and your husband owned the property. In that situation, if your husband then dies, a day later, a year later, 10 years later, even if he's remarried, no matter what his financial situation is, MassHealth will have a claim against his probate estate uh, for the entire amount that was paid on your behalf when you were in the nursing home. So you, your husband's going to need to make sure if you die and he becomes the sole owner of that property, that he, he does something with that property, transfers it to the kids, puts it into trust, does something to make sure that following his death, Mass Health is not going to have a claim against his probate estate and therefore against that home. So, as you can see from these descriptions, what is being proposed as part of the governor's budget is a dramatic increase in Mass Health's ability to, to recoup money on, on account of money that Mass Health has paid. Now, if you've done any of this planning or you're currently set up so that you, in order to try to avoid these issues, are you protected? The answer is no. Unless you're on Mass Health right now, or unless you get on Mass Health by a date which is in the, uh, in the governor's budget, which, which right now is, I believe, the middle of July of this year, then these new rules are going to apply to you and they're going to apply to your property, no matter how they are currently structured. Now, I am emphasizing this because while many, many bills over the years have been filed in the legislature to deal with mass health and an array of other issues, the vast majority of these bills never get acted upon. There are thousands of pieces of legislation that are filed by state reps and state senators in the course of a year. Only a tiny fraction of those ever get acted upon. Oftentimes, and the reason often, is that legislatures will want to examine things closely and make sure they don't make any mistakes before they pass new legislation. So typically when a bill is passed, it will head to a committee. The committee will discuss it. If there, if there is some question as to what the impacts of this bill might be, or if there are other folks who might have interests that are adverse to that bill, oftentimes the legislature will send this to a study committee where the matter will be studied uh, and typically not acted upon in the year in which it's passed maybe not acted upon ever. The governor's budget is a different story. There will be a budget passed this year. It will probably get passed before the end of July of this year. The incentive, well, technically, if a budget isn't passed by July 1st, nobody gets paid by the Commonwealth after July 1st because there's no money to pay him. Um, so a budget is going to get passed this year. The question is going to be what form will it take and whether the various outside sections, including outside section 11, that have been proposed by the governor also get passed. Now, there are three possibilities. The legislature could reject outside section 11, or they could pass it just the way it's proposed, or they could amend it in any way that they wanted. In any case, though, one of those three decisions will be made 
before about July of this year. So if this issue affects you, if you're concerned about this either because you have done some planning or you were hoping to do some planning and wanted to make sure that as a result of that planning your home or your other assets were safe, then you need to do two things. First, you need to follow this issue. Talk to your attorney or to somebody who is paying attention to this uh, and make sure that you know how this legislation is playing out, whether, outside, whether there is a reasonably large likelihood that outside Section 11 is going to get passed, whether there th are things that you may need to do before the legislation gets passed or before July of this year in order to insulate yourself against the effects of this legislation. This is really, really important, especially on Nantucket because so many people, anybody who owns a house, owns something worth a tremendous amount of money. So making sure that this is structured correctly is very, very important. The other thing you can do is you can talk to your rep, your state representative or your state senator, because outside of Section 11 will not pass or get amended or fail unless both the House of Representatives and the Senate agree to it. So what, you, what your senator and representative uh, knows about, know about this bill, how they, how they pl plan to vote on it, whether they would, would support amendments to it, these are all issues that directly concern you, and you as a voter directly concern your, house, your representative and your senator. So you may want to talk to them about that. So to briefly summarize, um, there is a piece of the governor's budget that is pending right now, and it is called Outside Section 11, which will, if passed in its current form, dramatically increase the ability of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to get reimbursed after you die or your spouse dies for any payments made by MassHealth uh, regarding nursing home care. Um, you want to talk to your lawyer about this to make sure you're on top of it, to make sure you know how it may affect you. So this is the first time that you've seen me and I haven't been inter interviewing somebody, so I hope this wasn't just really boring. Um, but if you, if you are interested in these issues, you want to follow this, I'd be glad to talk to you if you want to contact me or if you want to talk to your own lawyer, talk to them, but stay informed on this issue. It's going to have a direct impact on you if you are an older person. Uh, thanks very much, and I look forward to talking to you. And next time, I'll have someone else to talk to you on the next um, installment of Bergeron Briefs. Thank you.